In this topic, we will be discussing the regulation of multinational enterprises by international organizations. Uh, we just discussed in the previous topic that multinational organizations have got formidable resources and many characteristics that can affect the um, collective bargaining power of the trade unions. But trade unions, they have also, uh, you know, grown and they have expanded their um, influence and they have also lobbied in various different ways in which they have become, they have also become more influential and have been able to counter the pressure that was created by the multinational organizations. And the way that they have created this pressure is that they have lobbied with international organizations such as the United Nations and International Labour Organization. So this lobbying by the trade union, it attempt, these are the attempts by trade union to exert influence over multinational via international organizations and it has met with some success uh, because this is something uh, which is which matches their magnitude of influence you know that united nations and its uh, different bodies they have got an international existence they have got an international influence and pressure over countries and over various different entities so therefore uh, these trade unions by lobbying with these international organizations they have been able to uh, counter the pressure of the multinationals and they have been able to achieve success <clears throat> so trade union federations such as european trade union confederation etuc uh, the labor movement has been able to lobby many international organizations uh, the different international organizations Number one is the International Labour Organization. Number two, it's the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Then a very common name, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD. And then European Union itself, they also protect the right of the workers and citizens generally. Um, ILO has been uh, one of the most influential international organization to frame guidelines and policies to, uh, to take care of the rights of employees and people working in, uh, in these organizations. How they have achieved that, they have international labor organization have promoted and they have made sure that there is freedom of association, people should be allowed to freely become members of trade unions, then right to organize and collectively bargain. This is one of the major guidelines of ILO. Then abolition of forced labor, ILO has been able to, all over the world, it has been able to abolish slavery, which is forced labor. So slavery has been abolished uh, completely from all over the world. Then they have been able to issue guidelines that uh, uh, focus on non-discrimination in employment, which has led to principles of equal employment opportunity of all sectors, from all ethnicities, from all types of uh, um, strata of the society. So women, um, the people of different uh, ethnicities, people speaking different languages, people coming from different countries, all of them, they get the equal right for employment. ILO principles have been uh, initially proposed in 1975. The ILO adopted a code of conduct for multinationals, which is tripartite declaration of principles concerning m and and social policy. Uh, so they have adopted this code of con uh, conduct. Uh, it was influential in drafting of the OECD guidelines for multinationals, which was improved, uh, which was approved in 1976. So uh, ILO in collaboration with OECD, they have uh, uh, developed guidelines that uh, 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 that monitor the processes, particularly regarding employment in the multinational organizations. Uh, OAC guidelines, what do they cover? These 
cover disclosure of information that organization multinationals they are supposed to disclose information transparently then competition how much competition and how at what level of what they can do while competing with other firms then financing financing ke kya sources honge terms and conditions kya hongi taxation ko kaise manage kiya jayega phir employment and industrial relations is a part of oecd guidelines and how is science and technology going to be managed by uh, these multinationals one of the very important aspects of these oecd guidelines is the umbrella or shapu clause uh shapu clause precedes these guidelines and it serve as a summary of lead in statement for guidelines or agreements uh ye jo shapu clause hai aur jo umbrella clause hai ye basically aapke jo jitni bhi guidelines hain unko ek tarah se summarize karta hai aur ye batata hai ki basically uh, kis tarah se mnes ko jo hai wo kaam karna chahiye different national boundaries ke andar it states that mnc mncs should adhere to the guidelines within the framework of law regulations and prevailing labor relations and employment practices in each of the countries in which they operate uh, so this clause is something which is considered to be a point of problem it is a point of uh, uh issue between the uh, trade unions and the multinationals multinationals they take this clause that employers they have understood the shapu clause to mean compliance with local law supersedes the guidelines so because the clause says that it should uh, follow the guidelines under the prevailing law and practices of that particular national country so it means that even if the um, uh, the organization is following the national law it need not follow the guidelines for example agar pakistan mein equal employment opportunity ka law nahi hai agar uh, usko clearly state nahi kiya gaya ki everybody should be given equal employment opportunity to even if wo oecd ki guideline mein likha hua hai ki इक्वल एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटी प्रोवाइड करनी चाहिए तो पाकिस्तान में जो काम कर रहे हैं मल्टा नेशनल्स उनको इक्वल एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटी को एडेयर करने की ज़रूरत नहीं है ये वो आ, ये वो एस्पेक्ट है या ये वो आ, वर्जन है जो कि एम्प्लॉयर्स या मल्टा नेशनल्स जिस तरह से परसीव करते हैं तो वो ये समझते हैं कि अगर हम नेशनल लॉज को फॉलो कर रहे हैं तो जब तक नेशनल लॉ उनको रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं उनको देता उस वक़्त तक उनको ओ के गाइडलाइन फॉलो करने की ज़रूरत नहीं है सो so, इसकी वजह से बहुत सारी कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज डिवेलप होती हैं लेबर यूनियन जो हैं वो इसको इंटरप्रेट ऐसे करते हैं कि इट मीन्स दैट द गाइडलाइंस आर ए सप्लीमेंट टू द नेशनल लॉ वो ये कहते हैं कि नेशनल लॉ में अगर इक्वल एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं है तो ओ की गाइडलाइन में चूँकि है तो मल्टा को नेशनल लॉ भी फॉलो करना चाहिए और ओ की गाइडलाइन भी फॉलो करनी चाहिए लेकिन मल्टा नेशनल कहती हैं कि अगर नेशनल लॉ में नहीं है तो कोई बात नहीं फिर ओ ई सी डी बिकॉज जो शापू क्लॉज है वो ये कह रहा है कि विद इन द फ्रेम वर्क ऑफ लॉ रेगुलेशन एंड प्रिवेलिंग लेबर रिलेशन एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन ईच कंट्री इन विच दे ऑपरेट तो मल्टा नेशनल शुड फॉलो दिस गाइडलाइन सो दिस शापू क्लॉज दैट क्रिएट्स अ काइंड ऑफ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी और इस कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी की एक बहुत बड़ी एग्जाम्पल जो है वो बैजर्स केस है जिसको आप बुक में पढ़ सकते हैं एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड फ्राम दैट पर्टिकुलर केस हाउ दिस कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी इज डिवेलप्ड फ्राम दिस शैपू क्लॉज एंड हाउ मल्टा नेशनल एंड ट्रेड यूनियंस टेक इट इन डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव एंड वट काइंड ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इट कैन क्रिएट सो आई रिकमेंड यू टू रीड द बैजर केस सो दिस वॉज हाउ international organizations they can put pressure on multinationals uh, to frame their uh, human resource policies and employment relations